I'm pro pro-life. I welcome pro-life legislation. What they did in Texas was interesting. So we'll have to look. I'm going to look uh, more significantly at it. I'm sure you are. That was Florida Governor Ron DeSantis expressing interest in enacting a Texas-style near-complete abortion ban in his state. He's not alone. Less than one week after Texas's de facto ban on abortion went into effect, lawmakers in at least 11 other states are considering enacting similar laws. Officials in Arkansas, Florida, South Carolina, South Dakota, Kentucky, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Ohio, Indiana, Mississippi, and North Dakota have all either said they will amend their state's laws to mirror the Texas bill or are expected to do so. The cruelty on display in the rush to limit the freedoms of women and place bounties on them has drawn international condemnation. The Guardian reports that, quote, United Nations human rights monitors have strongly condemned the state of Texas for its new anti-abortion law, which they say violates international law by denying a woman control over her own body and endangering their lives. Joining our coverage, NBC News correspondent Julia Ainsley and Joyce Vance is back with us. Julia, um, I, I've seen some reports from Governor Abbott today. Um, there is no fluency, no vocabulary on the Republican Party's part about what this actually is, which is actually about four weeks pregnant. The six-week uh, legal definition comes from the last day of a woman's last period. So this would eliminate 85 percent of all abortions in Texas. I haven't seen the numbers in all the states that you're reporting on. But talk about whether they're all doing this eyes wide open and understand that it is essentially, for all intents and purposes, an abortion ban. Well, that's exactly right, Nicole. I'm glad you pointed that out. And actually, it's about two weeks after most women could even take a pregnancy test. So it's not as if a woman has been living with the fact that she's pregnant before six weeks before she would be banned under the Texas law. As far as what other states are doing, it seems that there's, there's been an energizing since the Supreme Court decision last week not to intervene and to let the Texas ban go forward. But it could all fall apart pretty quickly, Nicole. It's not a very legally safe basket for these states to be putting all their eggs in because as soon as one of these uh, lawsuits actually comes where one of those vigilantes, like in a place like Texas, would sue an abortion provider or anyone even remotely connected to a woman getting a procedure after six weeks, then we would actually get the real dialogue about this case. You could have oral arguments in federal court where the big question would come in, how is this stranger to the woman who's suing this abortion provider remotely damaged at all by this decision? decision. Do they have legal standing? And that could be where it falls apart. We just haven't gotten there yet because no one has actually used this lawsuit to this law to file a lawsuit like that. And so until that comes, we won't really see how strong this law could be, but it could very easily fall apart. The other thing they're doing is they could tee up really what could be a one-upsmanship if you look at what liberal states could do. You could use this same strategy to say, sue anyone who illegally sells a gun without a background check. It's not something that seems like it could really hold for a long period of time, but right now these states are seeing that this is one that has gotten through so far. They're looking at the more conservative makeup of the Supreme Court, and they are quickly as fast as they can, getting these bills drafted to try to get them out the door. Joyce, if the Supreme Court has greenlit bounties on anyone who aids and abets a woman getting an abortion, should Democrats look at laws that do the same thing for anyone that, you know, as Julia says, illegally buys a handgun or creates and sells fake vaccination cards or sells masks that don't work. I mean, if this is the new tactic, if the Supreme Court has said, hey, wild, wild west, go get them, vigilantes, should the left respond in kind? So I'll, I'll just start by saying no. That's not the right way to make policy in the states, by setting out to write laws that clearly violate people's civil rights, well-established rights, and to hope that you can get those laws in place. I think we all know that at an instinctive level, right? We have laws. We are a rule of law country to make our lives better, not so we can play games with people and, and not in some of them, their most serious fundamental rights, 
Julia does a great job of pointing out what's at stake here because there are essentially two key points in time where people who are opposed to a law can challenge it. One is before it goes into effect and one is after it goes into effect. We haven't hit this second stage with the Texas law. Presumably that would happen if someone were to bring a lawsuit against people around a woman, people who aided and abetted a woman in getting an abortion. And then if that lawsuit was brought by some amorphous third party, we would have people who would challenge the statute as it's working in practice. But this statute, the evil genius of it, Nicole, is it's designed to not get to that point necessarily. It, it provided a perfect vehicle for the Supreme Court to let the law go into effect. You know, normally you would expect this challenge to go up on the shadow docket to the Supreme Court. It's procedural. The case hasn't been briefed and decided in lower courts. This is really just a question of whether, while this litigation over the law's constitutionality is ongoing, does the law get to go into effect or will the Supreme Court block it? And usually the answer is they'll block it. But they, they didn't hear, and that's because the Texas legislature, in essence, the Supreme Court says, the Texas legislature outsmarted us. They used this unprecedented private enforcement mechanism instead of the government being responsible for enforcing the six-week ban on abortions. It's, it's private citizens, people who can bring these lawsuits. And the Supreme Court said, we just don't know who we would enjoin, so we'll let this law go ahead and go into effect. It all sounds awfully silly when we talk about it in those terms, but it was very much a deliberately designed provision to allow this law to take effect and to deny women their rights for as long as possible, at least until this next term in the Supreme Court, when the court takes a clear look at Roe versus Wade and determines whether or not to reverse it in the Mississippi case, Dobbs. Julie, I understand the legal laboratory sort of conversation, but what's happening to women in Texas now? Well, by and large, there are very few places that they can go if they are seeking an abortion. A lot of these clinics shuttered after uh, the midnight deadline just last week when the law went into effect. Um, of course, there are some procedures that could take place before six weeks, and the clinics will remain open for them. But by and large, you would have to go across state lines uh, to get an abortion after six weeks, which is when most of them would take place. And I have driven many parts of the state of Texas in my immigration reporting. It is not easy to go across state lines in Texas, especially many places where you are. And especially for people who are uh, poor or economically disadvantaged, it would be uh, much harder for them to have that kind of access. I think that's really been one of the sharpest criticisms of this ban is that this doesn't really outlaw abortion in the state of Texas. It really just makes things much more difficult for people at the, at the lower ends of the economic ladder.